We are here today with Noel Rojas. Noel, it is a huge honor to have you here. So just, I'm just gonna give my people like the quick rundown on like how I feel about what I've seen from you. I was recently introduced to you, okay? And from what I can tell, it's like people in Texas really know who you are. There are certain states of this country that they know, oh yeah, Noel Rojas, I've had a Rojas cigar. I didn't even really know it existed, to be honest with you. I've read a couple of articles, I saw you in the peripheral, but I never really knew that it was a product that was on shelves. So in some places, I'm not really introducing you to people, but in a lot of places, I feel like we are. And I'm really proud to be able to be the first point of introduction to Rojas Cigars, because I, I honestly think that um, Rojas cigars are some of the best cigars on the market right off the shelf. Like they're the stuff that I would want to pick for the club like every time I smoke one. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. Noel Rojas, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's my pleasure to have you here, man. Um, I mean, what you're doing is amazing and you know, you got a really good following of consumers that I call sophisticated consumers. Yeah. Uh, which is the people that they don't want to smoke what everybody's smoking, you know. Sure. They don't want to smoke that mass made product, they want mm -hmm. something special, right. right? And a mass made product will never be special. So if you want something different and boutique, that's what you have. Yeah. And that's the place to be. So I'm really yeah. happy to be here with you. And Thank you for that. Hopefully uh, you can learn something today about tobacco and cigars. I and will look, that's all. That's all. That's what, and people don't realize this. At the end of the day, that's what Pravada is all about and what our members are all about. Learning on this journey of cigars. So. Smell good. Salud. Yeah, this is good stuff. Mm. This is good. Very good. It's out this of uh, Washington State, actually, it, but it's still very bourbon good. and it's pretty amazing. Okay, so I expected just to do a straight, regular interview with you today, and I just this was my intro. Your stuff is about to start dropping in the club quite frequently, and I wanted to just introduce you. But I see that you brought tobacco. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about what you want to do with this. Well, I have to tell you, man, I'm kind of an addict when it comes to getting the emotions of the consumers in general sense when they prove independent tobaccos by itself. Uh -huh. So I wanted to, you to go through the process that the only way that you could actually do it, it's going to Nicaragua or Central America or Dominic Dominican to a factory where you can actually try independent tobacco. So I'm, when you say independent tobacco, you mean I'm going to smoke just Sumatra. Exactly. I'm gonna, so the things that you're using to make the blends normally, I'm going to smoke them alone, exactly. independently of each other. Which is the way that you actually come up with a blend, right? You first try independent tobaccos. So you have a notion on an idea of flavor profile, complexity, strength, what? aromas. Ingredients, exactly. your ingredients. What is a cigar that mm -hmm you really like to smoke mm -hmm. and you will say i want to smoke this cigar right now for example just because you like it. yeah uh the there is one that's been going around that you can't get it very often the supreme leaf from agonorsa okay cool so supreme leaf from agonorsa is one cigar you really like yeah do you know what is exactly what you like about that cigar yes what is it it's nutty it's got a good um uh, uh, feel on the palate sensation but it's not overpowering and then it also has the retro hail with the pepper that I really go for the sensation do you know them. which tobaccos are giving you that particular thing that you like that much so I've been told that Lijero but I don't think that's true because I think Lijero just adds to the strength of the cigar right okay. not necessarily so you don't know which tobacco is. no you don't know which region is no right so you don't really know what your palate really likes based on regions. Mm. This is the point what I get into. Okay. What if I give you the opportunity or the choice to teach your palate what happened is, and you can light, one, light that one up as I explained, it's what happened is, uh, 
since the beginning you start smoking cigars that are already blended so you're smoking a milkshake per se of different flavors uh -huh. of ice creams okay but that's what your palate knows as tobaccos you haven't tasted each independent ice cream that was used on that milkshake to teach your brain with your tongue as you smoke it or you, as you taste it this is amazing what it tastes I've, like I've, i absolutely love this so this is actually the first time you're going to teach your brain how tobacco from oops, put the names on here ometepe this is the the island inside of nicaragua it's kind of a it's inside of a huge uh lake you can stop right here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic alone so by 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 this uh, the way that it is right now your tone is telling your brain hey this is how ometepe tastes like you like it? It's like the first time you eat an apple when you were a kid. You didn't have any flavors. I mean, the biggest problem I think today, based on you know getting to go, uh, getting to know what you really like, is that all the cigars we smoke are blended, and we don't have the opportunity to actually decide which regions that are being used on those tobacco we really like or don't like. Even when they say it's a Nicaraguan puro, it's still coming from different plants and regions and parts of the country, right? Exactly. And then Nicaragua has so many different parts and so, so many different regions, and they are so different one from each other. You know, and I have done, I have done this test many times with many consumers, and it's amazing. I mean, they really get mind blown when this they go Ometepe. through the process. That's just Ometepe. Volcanic. Volcanic uh, soil. Yeah. You know, it's this island inside of a huge lake. You see how good that tobacco Bro, is? Bro, I would smoke that, that well, alone over most cigars, period. That's what I usually do. I usually smoke independent tobaccos just because I want, you know, like some of my friends says, you know, I want my whiskey to taste like whiskey and my coffee to taste like, like coffee. I don't want coffee with cream and you, you know, really all break the things it down. because, you know, I want to have one flavor at a time. Uh, but the thing is, well, that one you're smoking right now is Chilamate. This is actually Aganorsa leaf. This is tobacco from Aganorsa. I really like the tobaccos they have. Amazing. And this is Chilamate. It's a, it's a form, but that is really close from Esteli. Yeah. And it, this is actually Corojo. This is a Corojo variety from Chilamate. In my town, it was a very little town, um, there was, at night, everybody would go out, right? And there is uh, this crossroad on the center of the town. And there was three corners that there was always people talking about certain things. One corner was baseball, one corner was tobacco, and one corner was uh, a cockfighting. <laughs> so oh, wow. this is every single night, right? Wow! You will go there, and you will have people, and you know they have their regulars per se, or the ones that always talk about the same thing, and then people will just jump from one, yeah, yeah, from one corner to the other one, and they will be discussing all night about, okay, no, this tobacco you have to do this and that in order to get the good crop, wow. and this and that. So they will be talking, and then you go to baseball, exactly. And then uh, you will talk to the guys on baseball. And you know this guy, you know he's really good pitching, and you know you saw how many how many miles per hour he was pitching yesterday, and things like that. And then you will go to the cockfighting part of it, and you know people were just talking about it. It's uh, <laughs> it's beautiful because people always talk about it in in Cuba. I mean that's what they talk about. One of the things that was surprised for me is how much. Uh, information how much lack of information about tobacco it is for the regular consumer and that's what the rojas brand is going to stand up mm. rojas brand is going to be the brand that is going to teach the consumer it's going to this is the era of communication this is the era of information right i mean this is not the old times we have a complete different era where people want to know what they're eating what they're drinking I mean, these are all the principles that Provada was founded on. And I couldn't help but feel like when you mentioned the corner and people sharing information about their craft, tobacco, that, you know, kind of like our, our social media is like that. It's that everyone's sharing. Oh, I like this. Did you like that? Oh, I heard this. I heard that. And I, I think as much as we're as, as society's losing community in some ways, we're also gaining it online. Not quite the same, but more information gets passed around more quickly, that's for sure. This is a very unique experience and I'm very, very, very surprised that each of these tobaccos taste as good as they do 
without being blended with anything else because some of these are good enough to just be cigars. They're actually, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly feeling like right now, like some of these have been better than blended stuff. What do you think of what you're smoking right now? This is so soapy and strong. Like it's almost detergent-like to me. It's very, very strong on the back of my tongue. Uh, still also has a great uh, retrohale, a little bit of pepper. I would call it extremely floral for most people. Okay, so on the density of the flavor, in a scale from one to 10, how much would you do uh, rate it? 15. This one's really hitting my tongue for some reason with flavor, not strength necessarily, or not, not body necessarily. But flavor, it's like, whoa. And it, I smoked a, a, a Bolivar the other night and it's got that salted peanut kind of thing, the, 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 the salt, you know, the mineral. Um, the first one was definitely more about the sensation and had like a little vanilla. Second one, I got a little bit more of a, like middle of the road kind of, um, it wasn't very floral, it was extremely, to me, it was very umami, like uh, had very much some of the flavors that I would want from like a Mexican food or something like that, uh, the, 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 maybe like the refried beans, just the texture. Um, would you say more aggressive flavor? More aggressive, yes, yeah. but also like in the umami earthy kind of sector of, of things. And this one you're smoking now, it's uh, Jalapa. So Jalapa, it's up, up in the mountains, uh, close to Honduras. Uh, usually it's, it's very sweet. Is that what you're getting? So, yeah, that's what I meant, uh, very floral. Yeah. yeah. So you get this like a uh, coffee but, bean aftertaste. Well, almost, of, yes, exactly. Yeah. And almost like, not overpowering, but it's pretty intense. Man. Yes. And the one thing that I also noticed with that particular tobacco, it's what I call the, the coating inside your mouth for yeah. the flavor. So, you know, that sensation that it, it produced when you, when you smoke it, you know, you have like a thick coating. Uh, when I talk about creaminess, uh, I, I think there is two kinds of creaminess. So you got the butter creaminess and the peanut butter creaminess. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, butter, it's, it's creamy, but it's very, very light mm -hmm. and fast. You know, it goes away really yeah. quick. And then you have the peanut butter aftertaste, which is creamier, but it's a really dense creaminess. Yes. So that's, That tobacco is, is mostly like peanut butter aftertaste creaminess. That's I what I totally get you on that. And, and I think that aftertaste, man, it really reminds me of like if you chew on licorice, it's really leaving like a, um, like a licorice kind of uh, uh, after finish. So this one that is next is actually the tobacco from the region of Somoto, which has become one of the top regions for people to like. It's brand new region with my friend, uh, grows tobacco. There is only a limited supply of that tobacco because there's no water there. But I have noticed that everything that I make with Sumoto, people love it. Which is 50% of the tobacco that it is on my uh, Rojas, uh, small gauge cigars. Uh, what, what, just different varieties. Nicaragua? Yes, yes. And what type of tobacco? Uh, let me see, uh, can you hand me the cigar again? Yeah. You sure. slide it up on the wrong side. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> there you go, so light it up there. Okay. So Somoto, it's in the border with Honduras. Uh, it's a valley where the, sand, uh, the soil is more sandy than Esteli or Condega or Jalapa. So it allows the, uh, the tobacco plant to grow in a different way. You know, the roots extend more You know, you can absorb more nutrients from the soil. And, and it's just, in my opinion, and you just tell me what you, want, what you think it is, but in my opinion, it's the creamiest, uh, smoothest tobacco that I ever taste. It's um, smoother than these. It's that's smoother. Sure. And that, that's a word that everybody said when they smoke it. It's super smooth, right? So going back to your question is, you know, in Cuba, I, uh, I have to work in tobacco because I have to. Uh, I mean, that was the income that I could generate for the house. How'd you start? What'd you start doing? Picking plants and shit? Yeah, just, just growing tobacco. Growing tobacco, planting tobacco, harvesting, uh, you know, uh, taking it to the tobacco farms. And Do you guys take tobacco for yourselves at night? Put a little in your back pocket so you can roll something like this at the end of the day? Uh, not really. I mean, in Cuba, what happened with the farmers is they have a certain amount of tobacco that they can keep every year for their personal smoke. 
And that's how I actually got started on, you know, knowing and learning about manufacturing and making cigars with a very old farmer in Pinar de Rio. Uh, he would just make cigars uh, to smoke itself and, you know, sell it to the, some, some of the tourists that will go down there looking for cigars with no label on it. You know, they will farm just... Farm roll. Yeah. Farm roll cigars that we will sell for a dollar, you know, 30 cents, 70 cents a dollar, something like that. Um, and that, that's how I actually got really in love. But the most important thing, uh, my biggest experience, right? So for a long time, I was working on tobacco. I was 17 working on tobacco and I never smoked any cigar. And I remember this friend of mine telling me, hey, you're here working with me, this and that, but you never smoke a cigar. I said, you know what, I think cigars are stinky in certain way. <laughs> I said, yeah, well, the ones they sell on the bodega, which is the one that the Cuban people can actually, it's the worst tobacco, they just use it to roll some, uh, some cigars that, it's not really high quality tobacco, you know, it's just a leftover. It's not the tobacco that is used for the premium cigars that you, you buy for 19, 20 dollars. You know, these are cigars that are sold in the bodegas for one Cuban peso, which is five. So this is the five stuff that doesn't make the cut. Exactly. Okay. Uh, it's you know bad quality tobaccos, basically. And he said, "You need to smoke what we're using here." And I said, "What is that?" Well, I mean, you have been rolling with it, but you haven't smoked it. Just just smoking. And back in that time, I had a girlfriend, and she was in the school for dentists. She was against the smoking. Of course. Right? Well, he gave me. I remember it was Bellicoso cigar. Five years age tobacco. Have you ever drank a cup of Cuban coffee? No, not not well, what you're thinking of. Cuban probably. coffee, espresso. Yeah, of course. Half a yeah. chip, you know, have a lot of sugar, right? A lot Cafecito, of sugar. Cafecito, I've had yeah. that. Yes. Cafecito. Okay, yes. Uh, I love that. Smoking that cigar was like drinking a cafe, Cuban Ooh. coffee. Every Let's sip go. Of it. <laughs> Let's go. So it's, this is the most amazing thing, right? I was getting, every sip that I was getting, was pure Cuban coffee with a lot of sugar in it, right? So it was, and, I, and I, at, at the same time, you get some saltiness. And I was like, how you can get all these flavors? I said, I told you, you have to smoke this. Right this away, you notice flavors yeah. like that. Wow. And then the, uh, the smoke, you could actually inhale it oh, through the it nose. Wasn't rough. And it didn't bother you at all. So, so what was the difference between that and the, and the shit? Mm. But, this is the thing. I'm gonna cut this here, All right, for you. Uh, once I get home, about two hours later, you know, I was kind of afraid to kiss my girlfriend, and when she kissed me, she said, "You were drinking coffee somewhere," and I said, "No." And she said, "Yes, let me kiss you." And you know, she licked my tongue and all of that, and I was like, <laughs> "Did you get any nicotine thing or?" She said, "No." You won't believe it. I brought a cigar next day, she smoked the whole thing. She was like, how you get that much flavor? But this is not the regular tobacco from Cuba. This is a guy who loves what he does. You this know, is his he best really of does. his best of exactly. his best. Exactly. So he, you know, he saves some for him. And that's how I was really inside, uh, you know, excited when you know, I started thinking about blending and you know, different flavors on tobacco and things like that. Bro, this tastes like limes. Like it's got like, like, like citrus. Do you see uh, now the difference between that and the other one you smoked before? 100%. In my opinion, and you tell me if you get the same, every palate is different. Do you get a cleaner, like a peanut butter, uh, sorry, like a, uh, a regular butter, butter uh, aftertaste? The finish, with is, that, the finish is here and gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Super yeah. clean. Yeah. If you get it through the nose on the retro hill, it's a strong because you have the, the strand on it. But it's just, it's not pepper, it's not spicy, it's not, it's just. Cream, smooth. I love it. And it's a lighter smooth than, than, than that one. And that's the Peruvian. Uh, that's the Peruvian tobacco, the one you're smoking right now. Noel, why, why blend then? They're all fantastic. If you sent me any one of these as a cigar alone, I'd be like, yeah, let's go. Well, um, it's very interesting to teach your palate so you know what you like. Okay. Now after that, you will have. That's the thing. There is not a product out there that will, you know. First, in order to like unblended tobacco, you first have to go through this experience. So how are you right. gonna know whether you like it sure. or not? So that's what I think is the problem, is people don't have the opportunity to taste independent tobaccos, you know? So Noel, I wanna do a cigar that's, out of all the cigar, the, the, the fillers that we tried, I wanna do a cigar that's 60% Omotep and 
20% chilamate and the jalapa. So that would be another 20% jalapa. Okay. Those are the three that I want to use as the fillers, and I'd like to use... Okay. 60, Senate. 20, and 20. 60, okay. 20, and 20. Okay. And I'd like to use a San Andreas wrap. Okay, cool. So let's use what I would recommend for that blend. It's a Somoto binder. Okay. Which is really flavorful, See? so it's going to add some smoothness to it. To it. So let's, uh, let's make it right here. And I have the molds, so we can just press it for a little bit on a... 46 gauge. Nice. Now, were my uh, variations of the tobacco, is that is that something that would be a blend? Is 60% of one thing too much? No, it's not. I mean, there's only one way to know, <laughs> which is find it out. any press here so I'm just gonna sit on top of it literally, literally. <laughs> yeah. so this is uh, literally a butt <laughs> press <you guys. laughs> okay let's put the Bot press cigar. <laughs> you've heard of box pressed, but you've never heard of butt pressed. It's just a, a nice. simple press. Yeah. Just to make it a little more dense. name of that oh that's a glue it's like a pectin it doesn't have any flavor or aroma now let's do classic Cuban triple cap You see, the, uh, one of the things Mexican rubber has is the veins are very close. So you have to look in between the veins to get uh, the triple cap made. So it doesn't get many veins. Wow, look at that. So you waste all that leaf just to cap a cigar. Well, in this case, uh, you know, it's, it's a very uh, narrow. That's one of the things uh -huh. with the Mexican tobacco. It's very narrow, you know, it's, it's, it's narrow and it's large. So you don't have too many choices of using the back end of the, of the leaf to use the, to make the, the cap. What if, what if I don't want a cap on these? Can you do that? Yeah, I mean, you can do it. Amazing. 
Look at that. <laughs> I love it. I used to go to Mexico with my dad. I used to love watching the people shine boots. Uh -huh. and this is what it reminds me of the way he just he's so fast with his nerves. Wow. Here you go, your uh, butt press cigar. Oh, man. It's a good looking cigar, too. I mean, for a cigar with no press. Dude, uh -huh. that thing is amazing. Wow. Thoroughly impressed, Noam. Now, one thing you want to do when you are smoking a cigar with a closed foot, you actually, instead of just burning it out, you want to taste that first leaf flavor. No, you have to cut it. It's not cut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying exactly what I say. Closed foot, just light the cigar. Don't toast the foot. Because you want that initial wrap. Exactly. So the reason why it's mostly, most of the time it's closed foot is because they want you to taste the flavor of the wrapper before filling and binding. Shaggy foot, it's you taste filling and binding before the wrapper. Got it. And most of my cigars are actually closed foot, so you can taste that wrapper. So closed foot, just light it right away. Don't, don't worry about toasting it. Exactly. It's got that omatep that it's got a lot of it. It's 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 a it's I want to say ashy. Um, it's very minerally, but in a nice way though. The retro hails nice white pepper, not not completely you know screaming hot. All of your cigars and this is what I look for I don't care if you blend your own stuff if you roll your own stuff if you grow your own stuff I look for a unique flavor and all of your stuff has this unique flavor that reminds me of the first flavors I was able to get out of cigars in the 2013 area which was when broadleaf was really becoming hot and Nicaraguan was like oh shit you know what I mean now, I do want to ask you, this is amazing. Could we get this for the club? Yeah, definitely. So you can make this exact cigar for the club? Exactly the same. So one thing I do want to ask you about, I noticed you didn't bring any tobacco from Dominican Republic. So there is a particular family in uh, Dominican that is called, uh, I think it's Reyes. And for a long time, I have been using their tobacco. I, I really like it. My, and this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. it's that Dominican tobacco help to smooth out all that aggressivity that the Nicaraguan tobacco mm -hmm. has, you know, because Nicaraguan tobacco is like a punch in the face. And when you actually blend it with some Criollos or Corojos from Dominican, you can get this smoothness, you know, it's kind of smoothed out, so it doesn't, you know, it's, it's more... Uh, it's more like a fine hand of a woman through your hair, mm -hmm. that through your face, slowly, you know, touching your skin instead of a you know a punch in the face with all the flavors and aromas. You know, it's something more smooth. Uh, that's what I like. Uh, I have been using Dominican tobacco in many blends for a long time. Okay. Yeah, but I'm more familiar with Nicaraguan tobacco. Now, the one thing that you will see on my products that I use, it's I'm not. As I said before, I'm not very traditional per se, that I'm just going to use one type of tobacco or the tobacco I grow or just, you know, I like to play because that's the magic of it, right? Play with all the tobaccos that I can get my hands off in regular basis so I can be consistent with the blends. And I, I use tobacco from everywhere, you yes. know? Um, I, I have some tobacco here, for example, from Honduras, from Nairoa, that I actually bought it from him. Super good tobacco. I will make a little cigar for you to try it out. And it's, in my opinion, it's one of the best Ligeros out there. 
por ojo, um, that will give you, but they're, they're good on their own category. You know, this, this corojo that I brought from is a ligero corojo. It's just super smooth. It has strength, but it's just smooth and creamy with strength. It's not spicy pepper. Or Got it. It's just clean, smooth. I mean, it's just unique. It's yeah, just we unique. definitely want this for the club, man. I really appreciate you, brother. Okay, cool. So, Noel Rojas, Rolling Cigars, learning so much stuff here. Thank you so much for this experience. It's incredible to see you put all this together right in front of us. And I'm looking forward to introducing the club to your stuff.